From studying criminal justice with eyes on a law degree to jumping into the world of music, entertainment, and management, and now a husband and father, Charles Whitfield is all about pursuing what makes you feel fulfilled. But it didn't come without challenges and sacrifices along the way. This is Night Talks. What did it take to start your record label? Um, one, from Michael putting in an investment of, of more than a million dollars, from his initial investment, we went out and got um, some other investors. So we ended up, and this was 1998, we ended up starting our label with $5 million in investment. And the beautiful thing was my boss, Steve, had a lot of great relationships in the entertainment business because he was already in there. And the one thing that Michael said was part of his investment was he didn't want people to invest because he was involved. So he ended up coming up with, our name our company is called Hidden Beach. He named his company Sandy Cole. So at the end of the day, no one even knew he was an investor until they actually invested on the business plan. And then once our deal was done, Steve sent out a, a welcome letter to all the investors. And actually it was another guy from Chicago that lived right down the street from Michael and he never even knew Michael was involved. And so at the end, we wanted people to invest in the business plan of what we we're trying to do, not because it was something that Michael Jordan was a part of. At Hidden Beach, how did you decide what styles of music you were going to produce and what kind of artists you were going to end up signing? Um, I mean, literally, Steve had, had worked at a, started a jazz label at Motown called Mo Jazz. And so basically, um, that was pretty much a jazz label. And so our focus going in was we wanted to start a jazz and R&B label. And so that was our focus. And our first three artists fit that criteria. Our first artist, as I mentioned, was um, Grammy winning artist Jill Scott. Um, the other artist we signed was a saxophone player named Mike Phillips. And actually, Mike actually just did the national anthem for the NASCAR race yesterday. So he's still around. And Mike's played and toured with Stevie Wonder, he played with Prince, um, he toured with Michael Jackson, Jill Scott, and so he was our second artist, and our third artist was a jazz artist named Brenda Russell. So we literally, our focus was to sign R&B and jazz artists, and so coming out the gate, we knew those were the type of artists that we wanted to focus on, and that's what we focused on. <laughs> 